We're leaving South Carolina behind and continue our journey through Georgia, Alabama, and on to Mississippi, the Old South. We also pass the small city of Philadelphia, where in 1964, three civil rights workers were brutally murdered by members of the Ku Klux Klan. The three students traveled across the South to try and get more African Americans to vote. It's a day later. We arrive in New Orleans, Louisiana, where after Hurricane Katrina, not just the city, but for many also their faith in politics was shattered. Among the school children in the marching band, we meet Dante. We join him to his home, where we also meet his mother, Miss Donna. A side of hundred proof, granddad. All right, let me show him one mistake here. You see where you went wrong here? You, you added this up, which was correct, 23. But you put it backwards. You put 32 instead of 23. You see? Miss Donna and Dante tell us how the National Guard evacuated them from their rooftop during Katrina. They take us back to a place that you will probably remember as well, Oprah. It's, yeah, right on the hills where they dropped us off. Imagine thousands of people just tossed from that point all the way to this point underneath this bridge. Thousands of people. They held guns on us all night, every night we were underneath this bridge. Why? We have no idea. Just like we didn't know why they wanted to separate our children from us, why they wanted to separate the husbands from the wife. Like they only had like like a hundred cots and they had more than a hundred people around here. They were just snatching two or three of them for their family. We only got one of them. It was a chaos out here. People most of the people were hysterical. They didn't know if they were gonna make it through, they didn't know what was gonna happen with them. It was a lot of animosity going on. Little children were being raped. It was a lot of, it was a Children lot. Children were being raped? It was so disgusting. And it's hard to keep your child away from a lot of stuff. We didn't understand why we were being treated the way we were treated. And all we were trying to do was get the safety out of the storm. What is this that'll make me want to run up? I have not voted since the storm. <laughs> After the tragedy we went through and no love for the people, I have no faith whatsoever in politics and I have not voted, I will not vote, I will not. They started asking everybody if they had weapons. If they had any kind of weapons, knives, guns, or whatever, put in the bag. So everybody thought the president was coming. So then at that point, you started hearing slings. They were like, if the president come out here, we're gonna kill him. But as they come up with the limousines and the sirens, one person screamed, Oprah. Everybody started running and hollering, Oprah, so Oprah, Oprah. came out of that limousine? Oprah came out. We were like excited. We forgot everything we were going through. We were glad to see Oprah. We just figured this woman was God. This woman was going to get us from underneath this bridge. Oprah said, I'm going to get you guys some help as, as, as fast as I can. And when we looked up, the buses came out of nowhere. There's an election coming up. Who can make you vote again? Hillary Clinton, the only one can make me vote again. And if you had your choice, who would be her ideal vice president? If I had my choice? If I had my choice, it would Oprah. be Oprah. <laughs> Oprah? It would be Oprah. 
Oprah, of course. Well, I'm very a... fond of this woman. Oprah is a very bright and very uh, strong, independent, uh, willful woman. You want her to run for political office? I would love for her to do it. 